in our neighboring Barbados. Um, I will be having some special guests on from Barbados to speak with us in just a minute. Uh, but first, I want to just put some context to what is about to be told to you. Um, as you know, the UIC stands firmly for protecting the life, liberty, and property rights of all Jamaicans and all human beings. So that includes our friends and our uh, brothers and sisters across the Caribbean, across Africa, across the globe. Uh, we want to make sure that everyone's uh, right to choose is protected, especially as it relates to their medical choices. And so we have some friends in Barbados who, like ourselves here in Jamaica, have been standing up for their rights in Barbados. Uh, you might be aware that the Prime Minister of Barbados has aggressively worked to inject as, as many of their citizens as possible. Uh, we're told that the official figure from the government is 65% of citizens have been injected with this um, experimental substance. And uh, we're also told that uh, in reality it might be 50% or less. We can't verify that, but what we can verify is that there are people in Barbados who are opposed to this kind of tyranny, medical tyranny, we call it. And so here in Jamaica, we're opposed to the medical apartheid, which is being pursued by our government here, and we're opposed to any form of medical apartheid in any other country. And so today we're going to talk about Barbados. There's also the interesting thing that Barbados has become um, a so-called republic. And I said so-called republic because um, Barbados is not a true republic. And many countries that claim to be republics are not true republics. In order for a country to be a true republic, it must be a country with a constitution that protects the rights of the citizens to their lives, liberty, and property rights. It must protect your individual sovereignty. So anything short of protection of individual sovereignty is not a true repu a republic. They may have a president, and they may elect a president, or they may appoint a president, but that does not make it a republic. Barbados has simply changed the color of the building, but not the substance of it. They have changed the name of the system, but they have retained the same colonial system that we have here in Jamaica, which allows for the manipulation and oppression of its people uh, in the name of them having government. What we are for is good governance, which protects the sovereignty of the individual and create a safe, clean, and orderly society that allows each person to achieve their maximum potential because they are free human beings. So, let me welcome now, on set, uh, some wonderful folks from our business. Welcome, my brothers. Welcome. Welcome. Uh, thank you so much for joining me this afternoon, live from Bridgetown, Barbados. Uh, I, I uh, just introduce yourself for me. Who am I speaking with? Well, I'm, I'm Bongalai. Bongalai. I'm, I'm Lamamba. And you're Lamamba. And, and we have Emmanuel. Emmanuel here. And we have Emmanuel as well. Welcome, Emmanuel, Lamamba, and uh, Bongalai. A pleasure to see you all. And um, obviously, you are men who celebrate the Rasta heritage and uh, Rasta features that um, makes for a rich culture and diversity. Now, you're having some problems over there in Barbados. Can you tell me a little bit about that, Bongalite? What is happening in Barbados right now? Um, well, here in Barbados, um, they're pushing us against um, a war, the, a back against the wall because they, they, they want to force us to take people to take the job. They want... Um, us to accept their republic and, and give us we have no ref, referendum we haven't we don't even they didn't give you the you really have no input mm -hmm. they're they're having us um they have having safe zones they, they, they want uh they want to um, jab our children before they go back into school next next term man a lot of things and I, I, La Mama can also share some of um, the things that is going on 
um, here. Sure, uh, sure. Yes. Let me hear what what is for your take on it, Lavamba. Yeah, well, my take is um, is as you called it earlier, medical tyranny. Um, I think it's just you know uh, the, the what this is showing us is that these leaders of the Caribbean, uh, the Caribbean, whether it's Barbados, whether it's Jamaica, whether it's St. Vincent, St. Kitts, they have no backbone. They have no, they, 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 they don't, they, they're in debt. They, they're so much in debt that they can't say no. And, and they're just giving up their people to become experiments. You know, mm -hmm. that, that's what it is. And if the people themselves do not resist, if the people do not themselves don't stand up and say, well, listen, enough is enough. You know, um, that two jabs will turn into three, that three will turn into four, four will turn into five um, until they literally kill you. Mm -hmm. So, so, so we need, we need people to, to actually see what is happening, understand that it has nothing to do with no virus, no pandemic. Um, they said it's a pandemic, but tomorrow uh, she is lifting she is lifting um, the the restrictions tomorrow mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, for 24 hours. So, how, how, how could, if you could lift the restrictions tonight. tonight for 24 hours? So, if you can lift the restrictions for one day, mm -hmm. I mean, I mean, you are you telling me that coronavirus is not going to be around for that one day? And I see, I we was just up there. We see people from from um from overseas from England. From England. Um, some 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 European guys and yeah. they don't have no masks, but she's telling us to walk but with masks. They're so out there among the people and they don't have no masks. Wow. So so basically it's it's discrimination here. Yes. So it's we're we're back to the to the bad old days of apartheid, the bad old days of discrimination, the bad old days of what goes for you is different from what goes for the masters. Yes. So what we have, what we have, are some leaders who are still of the colonial mindset. They, yeah. they have, yeah. they have not moved on. They're still, they're still tied to the colonial past, where their colonial masters give them dictates and they implement that and force that upon the people. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. And they are yeah. using, they're using um, strategy. To make the people come and take a vaccine, we and we are seeing a lot of damages um, to people that are taking the vaccine, and mm -hmm. we have information all over the net stating um, the, the negative effects of these vaccines, and mm -hmm. the government here seems to like, oh, that's fake news. When mm -hmm. we got professional people bringing out and showing us evidence, mm -hmm. educating us, and also so anything, have... so anything that doesn't fit the narrative is fake. Yeah, if you yes. if you don't agree with what they say, then you're a fake. You are a conspiracy yeah. theorist, and yeah. so on. Well, we're we're faced with the same problem here in Jamaica. In fact, it's worldwide. Um, the big media, uh, big business, big data, big pharma, and big government have all come together to take away the freedoms of citizens. You can't speak freely because you're censored on YouTube, you're censored on Facebook, you're censored on Twitter. You're censored in the regular television and, and radio media. So if this thing is so good for us, why is it they're censoring people? Why are they trying to prevent discussion, prevent information from being presented? Now, that tells us that something is very fishy in this whole right. thing. And so we have to stand up. And I'm very proud of you, gentlemen, for deciding to stand up for your rights in Barbados. And we're doing the same right here in Jamaica. But let's shift a little bit and talk about this so-called republic. What do you understand? What are they presenting to you as a republic? Well, uh, greetings each and every one. Big up to the family in Jamaica. Out of many, we are all one, for sure. Um, the, the whole idea is a parliamentarian republic. This is what the package is being um, pushed on the people as. But what has happened, basically, is that we're making a shift from one constitution to another. But as far as the time frame, I mean, the average individual doesn't understand legally, doesn't understand law. And we know for a fact that the constitution that they're putting forward, that they had the charter that they're putting forward, doesn't really apply to the individuals on the ground. And we do understand that this is an extension of the colonial past 
mm. and basically it applies to the plantocracy or what they call the stakeholders. Mm. So the input hasn't been uh, put out to the public. Yes, there's been one or two little Zoom meetings here and there. But with respect to that, it really is just about disseminating information to the people um, pertaining to, you know, there's no difference. Like you said earlier, it's like Kentucky Fried Chicken becoming KFC. The directors were still the directors. Uh, the menu was still the menu. All they did was just give it a new name. Uh, yes. The people in Barbados, the individuals who are on the ground, those who have been here indigenously originally, uh, those who are brought here from another indigenous land, mm -hmm. we are still here. So the thing is that Barbados was always a republic before the colonizers came. You see, this is the thing mm -hmm. we got to get at. And there were mm -hmm. charters already in place. So these charters that were put in place originally that were just abandoned and discredited and pushed to the side, like the Maroons you have there in Jamaica, you see, mm -hmm. they still have yeah. their charter, they still have their sovereign status, and they still have their territory. Mm -hmm. Well, here in Barbados, well, you know what happened, basically. You know, they, yeah. came, they, they came with the colonizers, the militia group, like they did in St. Kitts uh, in 1626, we came, we came. 1627, yeah. and basically decimated the place. Mm. I'm hearing, I'm hearing a replay. Are you playing? Sorry, one second. Yes, right. It's um one of your videos just started playing, but no worries. Um, speaking about the Republic, uh, one of the problems we have, you see, in the Caribbean and probably around the world is a general lack of knowledge when it comes on to governance and matters of government. Uh, they have made sure that in school they haven't taught us what really is going on. What is this thing we call government? What is the purpose of government? Why do we have government? Why do we need government in the first place? People don't understand that the purpose of government in a free society is to protect the rights of free citizens. Instead, what we have is a system of governance where we elect some people and then they become our gods. They become our dictators for four or five years. They get to make decisions on our behalf without consultation, without proper information and education. And so what we have in Barbados and Jamaica now is an elected dictator. And then this dictator now dictates to us, as opposed to having good governance where the role of the government is to make sure that your fellow Bayesian, your fellow Jamaican cannot use force or fraud to interfere with your life, your liberty, or your property rights. That's the real essence of government, to protect each of us from each of us in terms of you can't use force or fraud to take what belongs to me, and I can't use force or fraud to take what belongs to you. And on top of that now, to have an army, which is to protect our borders, so that China or the US or Germany or whoever, um, if they try to invade our country, we have a, an army that will help to try to protect us. Now, beyond that, what we now have is government, which really now creates laws and regulations to suit a minority at the expense of the majority. So you have elites now in the society who controls our electoral process by virtue of money, for example. So they can buy, you know, who can be a nominee, buy who gets elected, and then they control those who are elected to control our economy and control our regulations to work against us. That's what's happening in Barbados. That's what's happening in Jamaica. That's what's happening in most countries. So when they tell you now about you're changing to a republic, it is merely a soother. It's merely window dressing. It is to send the fool a little further. It is to trick you into thinking that something meaningful is happening that's going to improve your lives when in fact nothing has happened except a smokescreen to continue to hide from you the truth that you are still a slave, that they still have dominion over you and can decide what they're going to do with your time, what they're going to do with your labor, what they're going to do even now with your bodies. And so that's what we're seeing in Jamaica. That's what we're seeing in Barbados. And we, the people, have to stand up and fight against it. But unfortunately, because they have had control of our education for so many years, they have educated us into becoming weak and whimsical, 
and don't even know what our rights are and how to stand up for it. Is that your experience in Barbados? Well, the education system here is pretty much the same colonial curriculum. Like you said, it was designed not to create leaders, but designed to create servants. And yeah. therefore, the culture of most of the Caribbean lands, because you, you say Jamaica because it's over there, Barbados over here, but every territory between here has been the victim of the same duplicated a mindset from the colonial powers before. But like you said, education is very important in terms of in, in, enlightening the people, bring them to a level of awareness. And not mm -hmm. to get religious, but we can use the story of the Bible when it talked about the, the, the Hebrews learning a different, having a different education, having a different diet, and therefore mm -hmm. being brighter and being smarter than the others. Not that that's what they are, it's just that the, the purpose behind the education was it to create a servant, was it to create mm -hmm. someone who was docile and would simply obey, but someone who would know how to govern themselves and therefore know what good governance is. And you're correct. The whole idea is to do as you're told. You mm -hmm. see, do as yeah. you're told. So they, don't, they give you an anthem, they give you a flag, and they give you a pledge, but they never tell you what your rights are. I never Absolutely. teach you what the law really is. And if they tell you, and if they tell you about your rights, they actually make it convoluted. For example, if you go to the United Nations, they will give you a long list of rights, which makes no sense. Your rights are very basic. You you do not have the right. For example, they'll tell you things like you have the right to housing, you have the right to food. You have to, that's ridiculous. You don't have the right to the things that you have to go out and work for. You have the right to go and work for it. You have the right to earn, right to go and earn. Uh, but a right, a right is not a right if somebody has to be sacrificed for it. So if, right. so if so if you have to be sacrificed to meet my rights, it's not a right. It's theft. So you have a right to three basic things. You have a right to your life because no man is sacrificed to give you your life. Your life is yours. In, it inerts to you from God. It's inherent. Your creator give you that. That is yours. Nobody has the right to take away your life by force or by fraud. After that comes liberty. That is your freedom as a man. You have the right to be free, to make any choice you want about your life and your family. You don't have a right, however, to make choices about my life. So you can't say, I want to be protected from a virus, so I want somebody to inject you with something because I want to be protected from a virus. You can get yourself injected, right. but you can't dictate that I should be injected to protect you. <laughs> so, so, your, so your right to life and your right to liberty. And then number three now, the right to property. You must have those three rights. What is property? If you don't have a right to property, meaning to own yourself, because you are your property, to own what you have earned, if you work and you earn money, for example, that's your money. The government don't have a right to your money. I know they have conditioned us differently that they have a right to decide what is our take-home income. And they have a right to tax us as much as they think is necessary. That is all false. Your money or the or whatever you have earned or gifted to you by your parents, that's yours to do with it as you please. The one stipulation to that is that with those rights, the right to your life, the right to your liberty, and the right to property, you do not have the right to use force or fraud to take away any of those rights from somebody else. You can negotiate, you can barter, you can trade, you can have a discussion and try to convince me to your way. Let's say your religion. You can try and say, boy, you know, Brother Patterson, I think you should be a Rasta, you know. And we have a reasoning upon that and we talk about it. And if I see the reasoning and say, yeah, man, I'm not going to join your thing, no problem. But you can't come and force me to be a Rasta and I can't force you to be a Christian. And we can't force each other to take any form of injection or anything. We can say, let's have a reasoning. I, as a scientist, have looked at it and I think that this is good for you. I say, all right, me hear you. Next man comes and say, I, as a scientist, don't think it's good for you. Me hear you. And then me make the choice whether I want to take this thing into my body. You don't get to make that choice for me and I don't get to make that choice for you. But because we have some leaders who are lackeys and licky-licky and who have not created countries that are self-determined, countries that are self-reliant, 
countries that understand their role and place in history and society, who respect the autonomy and sovereignty of their citizens. Because we lack those kind of leaders, they quickly sell us out for a dollar. They get, they get frightened and excited when the foreign master come and say, I will give you billions if you force your people to do this or force your people to do that. And from time immemorial, they continue to sell out our nations, sell out our nations in order to get something that they think is free from their foreign master. Nothing is free except what your creator has given to you. No amount of gifts or grants or loans or benefits from your foreign master is free. They all come with strings attached. And this latest string is going to hang us. Okay? This latest string is going to possibly, possibly, wipe out generations of us. This latest string that they have tied to the monies that our leaders have agreed to take in order to push their foreign master's agenda may very well be the last straw to wipe out a certain people, set of people from this planet. And we owe it to ourselves and we owe it to our children and our grandchildren and future generations not to allow them to succeed. That's we right. must we must be prepared to fight to the bitter end and to That's die right. if necessary doing so. That's right. That's yes, right. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. right. Yes, and so I am I am I, I see people giving your prime minister a whole heap of praise because she go to some United Nations meeting and go give big speech and them a praise and a clap like them a fool. What am yeah. I clap for? What what did she say that is worthy of clapping? She simply she simply gave us she simply gave us the words that she wanted us to hear to think that she's doing something meaningful yeah. when she not not meaningful. She is selling out Barbados the same way that the Prime Minister here in Jamaica is selling out Jamaica and many of our leaders around the Caribbean is selling out the, the, the people of the Caribbean. Right. They have kept us divided. They have kept Barbados and Jamaica, Trinidad and Jamaica. Cuba divided us, Haiti it divided us. They have played into the hands of their oppressors. We should have one nation, one African nation spread across the world, one people, one government, where we stand as an African nation that nobody should be able to, to, to mess with us. We should have a united Africa on the motherland and outside of the motherland. Here in the Caribbean, we should be one people, not Bayesians and Jamaicans and Trinidads and whatever. Yes, we can have different one. Thoughts, but one people. That's right. And so when we speak, we speak with one voice. And when we raise up our army, is one army. That's and right. when, when the oppressors come to us, they face one people. Yes, we may be on different islands because a few island them. Yes, we may be on the motherland because a few motherland. And yes, we might be in the diaspora because we're free to travel if we want to travel and live in other places like any other races. But when it comes to who we are, we are Africans and we must have one African nation that defend the interest of the African people. That's right. That's right. That's why it was before. That's why it was before. Before the invaders came and they yeah. gave us a flag and created these corporations and gave us new names. Yes. This is what we have to get back to. That's why the one thing we'll take from her applauded uh, uh, speech, it is time for leaders to lead. And that yes. statement applies all across the board. Yes. His but, wait, said, but, where, but where is she leading us to? His Majesty said, all yes. that is necessary yes. for yes. evil to flourish is that the good people do nothing. Yes. The good people can no longer sit back in the comfort of their living rooms and watch what's going on. Like you said exactly. earlier, we have to do something. Yeah, something. and, we, and I, I am proud of you guys because like us, I mean, I was thrown in jail here for leading the march against our parliament. So I led a march of about 500 people against parliament and they locked me up uh, for it. Uh, but what, what, what worries me is that after they locked me up, we don't have a million Jamaicans getting up to say, let's go out there again. They're all sitting down watching and saying, what is, what is he going to do next? Yeah. Instead of they rise up. It's like, the, it's like this, this idea of a messiah of taking over our minds. They have tricked us into waiting for messiahs. We must wait. We must wait in the sweet by and by for that beautiful day 
when some Messiah is going to redeem us. Well, I'm not waiting for the good, the sweet by and by. We need now as a people to redeem ourselves, to free ourselves right now. We don't need to wait for a Messiah to come. We are the Messiah we're waiting for. Right. That's right. Yeah, that's we right. are the Messiah that we're waiting for. We need to stand up against the tyranny of our own black brothers who have decided to keep us in bondage. Our own black brothers who have been whitewashed and decided that they are going to stand with the enemy against the people of their own flesh and blood. So we, let us stop singing sweet by and by. Let us stop kneeling down and praying with our eyes closed, but stand up girded and armed for battle because they're not sleeping they're not praying yeah they're coming for us they're not they're not they're not wasting time every day that we are hoping and praying and waiting for a messiah the enemy is plotting and arming and advancing and they're advancing and advancing and they're taking more and more territory right now the last territory they have for tech is our bodies they have taken over Africa. They have taken over the Caribbean. Right now, all of our leaders are just lackeys. They're there to beg for loans and grants from everybody else. They're not leading. Well, they're leading. They're just leading us into bondage. They're leading us in right back into slavery. Right now, they're passing laws and putting in digital currencies. Why? They're not putting in digital currencies to help me and you to have a better life. They're putting digital currencies so that they can control us more. So that, so that, yeah, so that when we disagree with them, they just lock off your money. See, when you can't access any money, you can't do it. Do it. Yeah, say that again. They want to take your land too. Absolutely. Well, they already, they already took your land. Right now we're paying property tax. What kind of foolishness is that? How can you have a society where the people don't own the land? It's the government who owns it. That is dictatorship. You must not be paying property tax on your land. I know they tell you about the need that for taxes to take care of the site. That's foolishness. There's always income taxes you can pay to take care of the thing. And as you get older and as your income reduced, then you should be paying less and less tax because you have matured. You have paid your dues in the, the years from your 20s to your 60s. And now as you decline in age and declining earning capacity, then your tax burden should be less than those who are younger. Instead, they have turned it upside down. And they want, as you as an old man or old woman, you're aging on your property. You have to have heart attack now about paying the property tax bill. You know, as you as you get older and your, your income is diminishing, you must find money now to go pay a property tax. What kind of foolishness is that? They have tricked us with a, a bad education. We don't understand money. We don't understand the monetary system. We don't understand how they're tricking us. And so politician comes and make us fake and false promises and we fall for it because they have miseducated us. They have miseducated the Negro and caused the Negro to become Negrish. <laughs> they have caused the Negro to lose the appreciation of who he is and the power that he has that is inherent in his being. We have become dependent on government, dependent on foreign masters, and looking for handouts. So everybody wants to know what kind of handout the politician is going to give now. So when we go to vote, what are we voting for? Who telling us free? And anybody that tells us the, the nicest sounding free thing, we'll vote for them. Not realizing that what we're doing is voting away our rights. Because anybody who control your education, control your health care, control your economy, what, that, what does that make you? A slave. A slave. When you're a slave, the, the, the master decides your housing, where you can live. Him decide your food, where you can eat. Him decide your time when and who you can work for and what kind of work you can do. He manages your economy and manages your health care and he decides what you can learn. So if him want to keep you ignorant, him keep you ignorant. How do you keep a slave? Make him fearful. Keep him uneducated or incorrectly educated and at the same time keep him weak. And that's why they keep our economy so that most of us are poor. Why are we poor? We're not poor because we don't want to work. We're poor because the system is designed to keep you poor. It, if if you're not if you're not well informed about the system like most of the the foreign masters are, they built it, you know, so they understand how it works. They built it so they understand inflation. So while you're struggling to keep up with inflation, they're using inflation to make money off you. You understand? But I talk too much. Tell me some more about what's happening there. I want to hear about the safe zones. 
What is that? What What is that going on? The safe zones in Barbados. Well, what I what I can say with that about that is that there was never there there. Um, do you realize how much people she would be she would actually be killed? And I guess the, the doctors and the nurses or whatever was, um, said that it's not they wasn't really in agreement with it, and that is what she put it off. Not that it's not not that it's it's not on the table, and she's not trying to find a more craftier way of implementing it. Mm -hmm. But but for now she had to pull back mm -hmm. you Good. see what i mean right yeah but it's I only mean, temporary but it's only temporary of course of course because tonight, what are you going to do yeah go ahead go ahead bungalow tonight they're, they, when they're having their um ceremony um only the um the vaccinated can come in the, the, oh there's going to be a safe zone yes right tonight right so, um, so what they do the now they, they, they start to implement the apartheid so yeah. they have they say only the vaccinated or i don't want to use the word but only those who have been injected because because my yeah. friends let's not call this thing vaccine eh? let's not yeah, yeah. the infected, yeah. the, those yeah. are the infected. Yeah. yes so those i call them the injected no, and in jamaica infected. and in, and in jamaica in jamaica we um we, we have our own little collo colloquial phrase we call them the juked so those who have been juked are the ones who are allowed like recently they had some football match here in jamaica and they they had only those who were juked could go to the football match and go watch jamaica play against um i think the us or somebody uh so so this is the apartheid system where our own black brothers and sisters have decided to implement an apartheid system in our countries but guess what they're applying the basic strategy of the colonial masters. Every country they go into, they divide it in order to conquer it. And that's how they're trying to conquer Jamaica and Barbados and all the other countries, by dividing people into those who are injected and those who are not injected. They want the injected to turn against the, the uninjected. And they want us to fight each other. But here in Jamaica, what we have been doing, the UIC, which is a party that I represent, we have brought together the injected and the uninjected, the Rasta and the Maroon, the Catholic and the Christian, the Muslim and the Pagan. We have brought all of them together and we are fighting this monster. So, so far, they have not been able to get beyond 15% of the population because we are fighting them and we're going to continue to fight them and keep fighting them. And I tell you this. One thing is for sure, I will not stop fighting until I'm either dead or them stop. That's the only two outcome we can have. And we, the people of the United Independence Congress of Jamaica, are dead set on stopping this government from juking Jamaicans who do not want to be injected with this substance. They are trying to get our people, unbeknownst to them, to be a part of an experimental system. This is an experiment. Right. This so is it's not, not, it's not an experiment. You know, yeah. They know the outcome is death. Exactly. So You're so right. It's an, ex, it's, an ex, it's an experiment for those who don't know. That's right. That's <laughs> so, right. so those who don't know, like our, our misleading leaders, our misleaders, most of them don't have a clue what they're selling. That's the they're only selling it because they're getting paid to sell it. That's and the they feel it is in their economic interest to sell it. So they're selling it. They are running an experiment because they have no idea what they're doing to our what to, the, to their people, what they're doing to the people that, that is looking to them for leadership. So they're doing it. Are they still but, using the PCR in Jamaica? But, but um, one second here. Let me see something. I am getting a call. Not sure why. One second, one second. so i i have stopped that so yes so they so so our leaders most of them don't have a clue and when i say don't have a clue i don't mean they're innocent they have decided to be willfully negligent 
They have the state resources to assess this problem properly. They have the ability to think and to reason. They're not dumber than you and me. But they have chosen that it is more expedient for them to simply push their people into this rather than to stand up for the rights of their people. And we in Jamaica are going to vote all of them out and we're going to encourage all of our fellow um, African people across the, the diaspora and across the Caribbean and Africa to yeah. vote against those, to That's vote right. against those who have voted against us. Our saying. leaders have voted against us by right. taking money and pushing a substance that is going to be and could very well be disastrous for the people. I have to go now, but any final words from you, gentlemen? Okay, um, well, yeah, um, I would like to say that, you know, they have a drug here, Ben, Dis ben, ben Disavere, um, mm -hmm. that they're using here, uh, one yeah. of the, um, that, that they, it damages the, the liver, you know what I mean, and mm -hmm. it's causing death to the people. Now, that's been, the information has come out from the facility um, by nurses, by people who went yeah. out there and everything, and, and that's been told that they've been told that that's what's causing the death. Even we have yeah. a brother, um, that's who did this research named Fred Corbin. I be must spread the word um, a little earlier before that. Yeah. Make people aware what's going on. And the government still carrying on uh, uh, with this with the, the same thing that they're doing to the people. They haven't stopped. So I mm. cause the government, if you hear the people, the, the, the cry of the people is saying they're creating um, death in a facility where you're causing death to the people, the people and the people are crying out and you don't go and investigate you don't stop it that means you're part and parcel of the same of what is going on so yeah man they, they are a part of it i mean our government are complicit in crimes against humanity crimes against your own people this is treasonous this is treasonous and i hope our people barbados all the people in barbados jamaica and the others we stand up and realize that our leaders have committed treason and they should be tried and charged and fully punished for what they have done to the people of this country. Go ahead, one my brother. Is, the, 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 one yeah. thing I also want to say that is that if it's possible that we can get together a, a, a week or a day that all of us yes. protest, that day we select a day that's suitable and all of us together, the whole Caribbean. Absolutely. We well, let's, let's try. We can organize and try. Uh, one of our biggest difficulty as a people is is what you're alluding to now, which is unity. Uh, if we can get unity across the Caribbean and with our African brothers and sisters, yeah. But let's try, you know. Let's see if we can get it done. Let me hear from another first on your team. Yeah. Final words, anybody? Yeah. Well, um, first of all, thank you for um, inviting us to the program um, to, to your show, and um, I hope this is not just the first. I, 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 you know, I hope that we'll be, there'll be more, we'll be, we'll be talking to each other more, communicating with each other more, because yes. in order to bring about that unity, there must be communication taking place, right? Absolutely, right. absolutely. So, well, you just tell your other Caribbean brothers that we're here. Uh, right. the, the word UIC in Jamaica, it stands for United Independence Congress, but in the Caribbean, it stands for United Islands of the Caribbean. So. <laughs> One Caribbean. One Caribbean. Yeah, one Caribbean. Absolutely, one Caribbean. So here in Jamaica, we stand for one Jamaica, and now we want one Caribbean, one people, committed to one resolution to protect the sovereignty of every individual. We want a government, a system of governance that protects your sovereignty and which allows you to achieve the best possible version of yourself than you can possibly achieve. Yeah. Final words, my brother, in the middle, your turn. Yes, uh, but again, I want to echo the words. Thank you as well. Thank you all in uh, Jamaica. Otherwise, you always tell people there's no such thing as Jamaica because they took everybody else from this side and sent them to that side, in a sense. But like you said, out of many, we are one people. Mm. We are one people, not divided by flags or labels yes. that they impose on us, but we are united in that spiritual order. You know, so I definitely want to agree with that as well. We don't look very different at all. We look no, at we us. Don't, we don't, well, we don't look very different at all. You know, <laughs> you're the cousin across the water. That's exactly. Like you We're said, one people. Like, 
it's time we start to to, to, to sing that. As a matter of fact, you, yes. you said you were Christian, correct? Uh, well, what I was trying to make was the point, it doesn't matter what religion, let's respect right. each other. I agree. And I was going to say that this is Springboard and say, though, that yes. we have been allowed to believe that there's a difference. You're this, you're that, labels, you're yes. this, you're that, you're this, you're that. But one yes. thing we all have in common is that the same flights you're facing over there, the same challenges you have over there, the same issues you're dealing with over there, yeah. All the Caribbean islands currently are on the same exact. I mean, you could you could close your eyes and listen to the news, yeah. and you're listening to the news in your own country. Yeah, your as a matter country. of fact, as a matter of fact, the entire world is now under oppression. It's Black, right. white, red, right. yellow, we're That's all right. being oppressed. That's right. And guess what? We all have one thing in common. We're all human beings. We may we may have a darker shade. Or a lighter shade. We may be taller or shorter. We may be fatter or skinnier. But we have a brain. One. We have two eyes. We have a nose, a mouth, two hands, two feet. Unless you are amputated, we are one. And the sooner we we put aside our differences and focus on our common need, and that common need is every man deserves to be free every man the only time you should lose your freedom is when you decide to take away another man's freedom and our leaders have chosen to take away our freedom and we must take away theirs lock them up and thank make you. sure they pay for the treason that they have committed against us thank you my brothers god yes. bless you That's until enough. next time take care yes. respect big up yourself